Oh Show us what you got. Mashed potato pizza. Ooh, that's glorious. Gluten free. It's glorious. Gonna have us a little cheat night? Yeah, I've wanted this pizza since January. <laughs> My manager was like, oh, you're going out tonight. And I was like, well, I've wanted it for like six months now. Yes, sir. Reawakening Team Fluffy. But just tonight. Because he's the best. All right, on. Nothing's gonna ever bring you down. Remy. I hear you're featured in Jurassic Park, the new one. The Brontosaurus. So I've been keeping this on for uh, background noise while I work downstairs. Probably save electricity and turn it off. Check this out before I actually go to Home Depot for a new little project. Show you guys this is a little creative touch I did to the home gym. No, this is nothing major or awesome at all. <laughs> it's just very minor. But I just cut these little slits in the matting here. And this will allow the bench. There we go. I needed two hands to move the bench. But yeah. So now there's going to be no more you know, wiggling the bench around and testing it out and trying to figure out where the exact center is. Now I know exactly where I want the bench placed every single time, which is really nice for these rack setups. I also removed the matting from the floor here just to make it more firm when you squat. You know, uh, it just feels a lot more stable to squat on solid wood as opposed to these rubber mats. And then lastly, I didn't do anything dramatic here, but I did insert some screws right along the bottom of this. You can't see them because they're wedged right up against the metal. But that'll stop this thing from sliding forward. I don't care that it wobbles a little bit when I rack it. Like, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to hit the wall if it tips over. So it's not going to, like, tip. But every time it does wobble, it gets slid a little bit more forward. And that throws off the positioning of everything. So now it won't slide forward. And now I have an exact marker for where I want the bench set up. So just a little bit more convenience, plus, you know, better squatting ground to stand on now. You know what, I'm gonna start setting a good example. I've noticed a lot of YouTubers will vlog while driving, and I'm very guilty of this. I was doing this back in 2009 for the Eating Big series, but I, I don't think it's safe at all. In fact, I think it's quite dangerous to be focusing on a camera while driving. So I'm gonna start vlogging pretty much only when I'm parked or if somebody can actually film me while I'm driving. Start setting the right example. <laughs> anyway, I'm in the car. Heading to Home Depot, I'm gonna get some lumber, and I actually have my trusty Victoria's Secret measuring tape here. I imagine this is probably Ari's or somebody's. I don't know where I got this from, but yeah, it's a pink Victoria's Secret measuring tape, and it's a lot easier to fit in your pocket and carry around Home Depot than a regular measuring tape is, so we're set to go. I got six jobs, I don't care. Quick little shout out to the tank top today. Woo! Rocking that XO. So we're here, Home Depot. Time to get after it. So this is a little untraditional, but this might actually be the best bet. Since I've been using bumper plates anyway, they're wide enough to stand on for deficit platforms. And this is exactly three inches, I just measured it. I could tack on like a little piece of wood at the far edge here so the weight doesn't roll off. Still leaves enough room to stand on for deficits. We might go this route here instead of having to buy a bunch of other lumber and like cut it all up and whatnot. I just sorted through a bunch to make sure I could get the flattest ones because some of them were bowed and they would rock back and forth. But these were all pretty sturdy, pretty flat. So these are the big mats that I use for my deadlift platform, but we don't need that for this. For this, all we need is like the smaller rubber mats. But as you can see, they're pretty expensive, like 40 bucks per, uh, per package. And they can be even more expensive than that sometimes. So what I do is come over to the car flooring slash welcome mats. And now these can still be kind of expensive, like 30 bucks over there, 19 bucks, 20 bucks. But if you go over here to the cheapest, like car flooring slash welcome mat, $3 for this bad boy. You flip it over, it's all rubber on the other side of it. Perfect and it happens to fit these wooden circles perfectly. So I'll just get two of them, it's only $6. I mean, George Lehman deadlifts with just wooden blocks. He doesn't even put a rubber surface, so it's not really necessary. The rubber surface just kind of stops the wood from chipping and splintering away, and obviously it just makes it look really nice. 
because the wood will get all chopped up without it. And then also it adds for good footing. Like it grips nicely so you have something to stand on if you're using this for a deficit platform. This is only $2 and change and it's like really nice. So I might as well just get this, keep everything looking clean on it. It's also sturdy. So all this came out to about $42.48. I just gotta assemble it pretty much now. Maha, it's alive! We have the tools and the technology. We can rebuild him. We can make him bigger, stronger, and faster. That It's Alive just reminded me of that claymation. Do you guys remember? Oh, I cannot for the life of me what it was called, but it was a claymation with like, I think it was a pig or a rabbit or something like that. I know his sidekick was a snail though. And the snail would go into its shell and like it had its own living room inside of its shell and all that. And they're like in some haunted castle and there was like Frankenstein involved in it. And like, it was a big claymation from my childhood. I cannot remember the name of it, but uh, Oh man, that was, I think that was how like it started. It was like, it's alive! And then the music would come on. Yeah, I doubt any of you know what I'm talking about. So these screws are very good. Wood screws, obviously, they only go in about two of them though. So we're gonna drill in on this side and then drill in on this side as well. And uh, I'm gonna pre-drill all the holes, of course, so there's no splitting. I sunk one into the middle so they'd at least stay put. And as you can see, it secures two at one time. So, here's what we have going on. I put four in this side. The other side has three, right? This is the side I did first. So I put one in the center, top, bottom. So, over here where there are no screws, that is where I drilled in on the other side. So, opposite sides. Um, and then, obviously I couldn't put one in the center because there's already one in the center on the other side. I didn't want them to meet and hit each other. So, I put them just kind of off center here. Um, that way they didn't meet each other. I'm probably going to use this side to put the, plat the mat on um, because the screws are more evenly dispersed and there's four screws in this one so this top plate's more secure I think and uh, I don't really want weight slamming down and hammering in on the center of the screw there just potentially so it doesn't ruin the wood. So yeah, I think this is going to be the side I go with for the top that's going to take the brunt of the force. So I just put this on top of the mat, lined it up, and cut around it. Some of the parts came right off. Some are almost off. So now I'll just remove this there's my cut and I'll just finish the job so we have our circle as you can see it's clean but a lot of like frays on the edge so it's gonna put a layer to the edge and get rid of the frays I don't know if you can see that super well but the frays just disappear see Smooth edge all of a sudden. So I'll do that all the way around. So here's the final product. I put uh, four of these bad boys, that one's all bent, but four of these in the sides and then one in the center. And that's going to really grip it and hold it down. Then I put some stubby flat headed nails like this, four in the sides as well. And that's just going to help keep the mat fully stretched out so there's nothing flapping up on either side. Um, the problem with nails is. As the mat moves, it'll tear away from the nail and eventually the whole mat can come up over the nail. But these guys will hold it in place really well. The nails will make sure it just stays down. So it's pretty solid. It's not gonna move around, flap around, nothing. Yeah, all finished. Is it pretty? No, not at all. But will it work efficiently? Absolutely. Look at this, I uh, I just cut the edges off of these little guys, pre-drilled them, and stuck them on there. Uh, not really pretty, I didn't go out of my way to make it curved or anything like that. Just enough to make it work and be efficient. So this is how it's working. Um, this is just what was left on this rack here. Ugh. These are just 35s, but you get the idea. So obviously I can use these for three inch block pulls now, right? And these little wedges at the end, make sure the weights don't roll off the platform. Pretty easy, that's all you need. You don't need a super long edge right there, nothing dramatic. It's that little lip right there, that's enough that'll catch the weight. 
And then the other thing I can use it for is when I'm not doing block pulls, I can use it as a platform. And I made it wide enough where I can fit my feet right in there. But if you have like size 14s or something, you can just pivot it and it's still pretty wide. Obviously you have to be a conventional puller for this. And I mean, they're my blocks. So if they don't work for you, it's too bad for you. <laughs> but I'll bring them to Ocean State and whoever wants to use them can use them, of course. But now I have a three inch platform for deficit deadlifts. Boom. Just to confirm with you guys, boom. Three inches exactly. This mat might put like a millimeter over three inches, but that's fine because the mat will sink down and it'll be exactly three inches on the penny. So yeah, three inch blocks slash a three inch deficit platform successfully created. Look at that. Can we just marvel at that beauty? I mean, okay, the craftsmanship is not necessarily gorgeous here, but just, just the idea that these are, these are platforms of gains. It's just so beautiful. So beautiful. Look at them. They're just sitting there ready to be smashed by heavyweight. Like, they're just like, please drop crazy amounts of weight on us. This is going to be amazing. I can't wait. Woo! So gorgeous. Cannot wait to put them to use. You know, all in all, I got to say, this is a pretty cozy powerlifting gym here. I like this. I mean, it's nothing extravagant, but it's everything you would need just for a powerlifter. If you can't get to a gym on a certain day, you just feel like training at home. Pretty glorious.